Hi everyone, this is Audrey from TechWritingMatters.com and this is an introductory video to a four-part tutorial on documenting your project using Sphinx. So this is the work I'm currently doing in Season of Docs and I'm using Read the Docs as my hosting platform, uh, which is what this tutorial is going to cover as well. So let's have a look at the final product that we are going to be working up to. Okay, so this is the final uh, product we're going to be working up to in this tutorial. Uh, my software is called Jubler. That's what I've been working on. Uh, so we'll cover all your basic tech writing needs, including installing these hyperlinks, linking to different pages, how you set up the table of contents uh, in groups like this, how you insert images, um, link to different parts of the page, embed a YouTube video. Uh, we look at inlining sorry, we look at inserting an inline image as well as uh, how to create these types of note boxes. So Read the Docs is quite a beautiful theme in my opinion, um, which is why I wanted to focus on that in this tutorial. So we'll cover how you can get documentation that looks like this. So in this video I wanted to talk about who this tutorial is aimed for and how I'm structuring uh, this tutorial. I'll go over a Sphinx workflow so you understand how Sphinx works from a high-level perspective. I'll briefly talk about what a, what a virtual environment is because that's one of the steps here. And finally, I'll go over the GitHub workflow as well because we will need to use GitHub as part of this tutorial. So this video is going to be a little explanatory uh, because the next four videos are just going to be really practical. So this tutorial is aimed for complete beginners. Um, I didn't know anything about open source or Sphinx or use the command line about two months ago. And that's pretty much who my target audience is. I'm assuming you don't know much about these things as well or even have no knowledge of it. If you're a little more advanced, you might find this a little too basic. But I'll try to include timestamps in the video so you can just jump to uh, the section you want. So let's see how I decided to structure this tutorial. I'm going to have four parts here, with each part being a separate video. By the way, everything in these videos is also going to be in written form, which you can find on the website. So let's have a look at the Sphinx workflow here. Now, Sphinx is an open source project written in Python. It was actually originally created to document Python. Um, and the way it works here is it takes a bunch of text files written in a markup language called Restructured Text which is a powerful uh, language specifically for technical documentation. So it takes these text files, it puts it through this processor, this is my understanding, it puts it through a processor called docutils, uh, it's a text processor, and it outputs HTML. A Sphinx is a tool that sits on top of docutils to generate that, uh, that documentation, and finally, read the docs, pulls the documentation in. Uh, this step is missing a GitHub, so let me just switch to another diagram that makes a little more sense to me. Okay, so this diagram is a little more practical uh, from my perspective. I've removed docutils because I haven't had to deal with it. It's already installed in my library and it does work in the background. You take the docs and you use the Git software to push it onto a GitHub repository. Once the docs are living in a GitHub repository, it's really simple from there. You open a Read the Docs account, connect your repository to it, and the docs automatically flow into Read the Docs, and that's how they end up there. So now before you can install Sphinx, you have to install a virtual environment. And I'm just going to briefly explain what that is. Okay, so let's briefly talk about what a virtual environment is. Uh, it helps to think of it as, at least for me, as a sandbox. And I saw this analogy online. A sandbox where your Python project will live. So it keeps everything nice and isolated. Any programs you need to install for your projects are kept separate from any other projects you might have. So you can build different sandboxes, different virtual environments for different projects, and you can keep everything nice and separate. So let's say if you wanted to work on uh, project B, uh, you can activate the virtual environment for that project and the others are left unaffected. Pretty much for this tutorial, that's all you need to know. Okay, so the very first step was to create and uh, clone a repository. So I just wanted to go over very briefly what that meant in GitHub. So in GitHub, if you're working on someone else's uh, project, uh, that's called repository, uh, you, what you have to do in order to make changes to it or contribute docs to it, you have to fork it onto your own account, and that means make a copy of it. And from your fork, you're going to make a local copy that will live on your local drive. So that's cloning the repo. And the clone is where you'll make all your changes, you'll build up the docs, etc. 
So once you're ready to submit your stuff back to the original repo, you will push your docs back to your fork and then submit a pull request. And a pull request is just saying, hey, uh, have a look at what I've done, see if you like it. And the reviewers can either decide to accept your what you've done and merge the changes, or they can send it back to you and say, hey, this needs a little more work, why don't you make these changes? And then you'll just repeat the same steps. That's pretty much how it works, or at least that's my understanding. And of course, assuming other people are also contributing to the original repository, you'll want to configure a sync so that you always have the latest copy of the original repository on your local drive. That's a lot of arrows, so, but that's pretty much how GitHub works. And what we are doing in terms of uh, the Sphinx tutorial, uh, by the way, this tutorial is going to assume you're pushing the docs onto your own repository, which is why the first step is to create and clone your own repository. If you're contributing docs to someone else's repository, you're going to have to fork that repository, make a copy of it, and then clone it onto your local drive. And from there, you can um, build docs up. One last thing, in GitHub, the original repo is referred to as upstream, generally, and your fork is referred to as origin. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in the introductory video. In the next video, we're going to get right into part one of this tutorial, and we're going to get started with the first three steps. See you there.